Hey there, in this video, we'll talk about the unit of work of the ABP framework. The presentation part. The unit of work term itself is a behavior that stands behind everything one does during a business transaction that can affect the database. Martin Fowler describes it as the following. It maintains a list of objects affected by a business transaction and coordinates the writing out of changes and the resolution of concurrency problems. And he goes on to say, when you're pulling data in and out of a database, it's important to keep track of what you've changed. Otherwise, that data won't be written back into the database. ABP's approach to the implementation of the unit of work provides an abstraction and control on the scope of a database connection and transaction in an application. And once a new unit of work is started, it creates an ambient scope that is participated by all the database operations performed in the current scope and considered as a single transaction boundary. The operations are committed on success or rolled back on exception altogether automatically by the ABP framework. The ABP's unit of work system works conventionally, so most of the times you won't deal with units of work at all. It is independent from database providers, so it does not matter what database provider you use, it'll still work. And it is also web independent, and that means you can create unit of work scopes in any type of applications beside the web applications or services. All the following method types are considered as a unit of work automatically by the ABP framework. ASP.NET Core MVC controller actions, ASP.NET Core Razor Page Handlers, Application Service Methods, and Repository Methods. A unit of work automatically begins for these methods, except if there is already an ambient unit of work in action. Now let us suppose that you called a repository method and no unit of work has started yet, so there isn't any ambient unit of work in action. That will automatically begin a new transactional unit of work that involves all the operations done in this repository method that you called. And it'll commit the transaction if the repository method doesn't throw any exception. This repository method itself doesn't know anything about the unit of work or the transaction at all. It just works on regular database objects. And the entire unit of work of it is handled by the ABP framework. However, if there is already an ambient unit of work, then this automatically generated unit of work will not begin. Instead, it'll just be included with the ambient unit of work. Let's suppose you've called an application service method, and this method uses some repositories. The repositories do not begin a new unit of work. It'll instead participate to the current unit of work started by the ABP framework for the application service method. And what is the point out of all of this? The point is if you wanted to change the behavior of a unit of work, always start from the parent and then go deeper. Now, we do know that HTTP requests are considered a unit of work automatically, and that applies to the HTTP GET requests. They do start a unit of work, however, not a transactional unit of work. Now, what is the meaning of transactional anyway? If a unit of work is transactional, then the changes could be rolled back before committing. If it was not transactional, then it cannot roll back the existing changes. And that does not have anything to do with the get method. You just want to retrieve something from the database and you're not gonna apply any changes to it. And so you do not need it to be transactional. And we can also configure the transaction behavior, timeout, and the isolation level values by configuring the ABP unit of work default options. Now, in some cases, you may want to change the conventional transaction scope, create inner scopes, or find control the transaction behavior. Let's see how we can do that. The first and easiest way is to use the I unit of work enabled interface. And just by implementing the I unit of work enabled interface, the methods of the service or any class derived from it will be a unit of work. However, there are some rules that should be followed in order to make it work. If you're not injecting the service over an interface like I my service, for example, then the methods of the service must be virtual. 
Otherwise, the dynamic proxy and interception system won't work, and only asynchronous methods are intercepted. Synchronous methods cannot start a unit of work. And notice if our method right here is called inside a unit of work scope, then it already participates to that unit of work scope without the need to implement the I unit of work enabled interface or any other configuration. And secondly is the unit of work attribute. It's got much more possibilities like enabling or disabling a unit of work and controlling the transaction behavior. It can be used on a class level or a method level. And the same rules apply. And these are its properties. And if a method is called within an ambient unit of work scope, then the unit of work attribute is ignored and the method participates to the surrounding transaction. And last but not least, the I unit of work manager. The I unit of work manager is the main service that is used to control the unit of work system. We can use it to begin or create a new unit of work scope, to get the current unit of work, and to save the changes. Now let us move to the code part in the next video.